at midnight, we're engaging in our 21 days prayer and fasting. This is to honor the Lord with our first fruit in prayer, our first fruit in fasting, and our first fruit in giving. We are entering 2019 with great expectation because this is the year of fruitfulness. We are exposing ourselves in this atmosphere of great faith, unshakable faith. As Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8, it said, Those who trust in the Lord, they are blessed. They will be planted like a tree. And guess what? They will bear always fruit in all season. Even when the heat come, they will not be burned. And in the drought, they will not be anxious, but will bear fruit in season. That's what we are after in this place. We want to give our best to God because God want to give his best unto us. We do not want to withhold anything away from him. Many of us are expecting great turnaround, miracles, breakthroughs, elevation, growth, release of ministry, extension of influence. That's what we are after. We want to know him. We want to be like him. And no better time to establish such in the beginning of the year. Just to tell him, Father, you are my number one. I want more of you. I want to know you. I want to serve you. I want to be transformed in your likeness. So let's take it serious as we hold hands together to introduce such in the life of cross point churches let we do this and establish it as a culture that will value every year in every cross point i have started with calgary i had a time to speak in ottawa and by god grace to speak as well today in nouvel espoir and all the other churches will follow this is what we are building for a generation not for us but for our children, 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 children. Listen, there is nothing that will make our life count for eternity than doing such. I know it's not easy, but as it costs us, it is valuable. So be strong and be encouraged to know you're not doing this unto a man. You're doing this unto Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So again, we're going to introduce a Daniel fast at midnight and carry on to the 27th of January. Pastor JB will give you the details of how the fast is going to happen, when we'll be meeting at the church for prayer time and so on. So I love you much. I'm going to see you next Sunday to press forth into establishing greater faith, giving greater revelation so we can lift up the name of Jesus Christ in such a time as this. It's your time, it's my time, it's our time to make a difference. God bless you and see you soon. Hallelujah. Amen. After the service, all the leaders of course. the Daniel fast and everything we'll do this month. Um, I will probably send um, uh, messages. Um, if I don't have your number, please text me your number so that I can communicate with you as well. Um, starting today, as, uh, as Apostle said, uh, we will be starting our fast and prayer. And this will go to January 27th. Um, and on January 27th, that's the first fruit feast of harvest. Um, we, we recommend everyone to be here. A uh, few details uh, regarding um, the, the fast itself. Okay, so those who are, I can see everyone is taking a picture. That's perfect. Um, <laughs> So, as you can see, um, the sanctuary will be pretty much open every day to receive uh, people who want to pray uh, after work. You don't have to stay here the whole time. Even if you have five minutes, just pass by, get your blessing, and go home.
And uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we will, we will be involved in uh, that activity either here or, or at home on Thursdays. So if you take a picture, that's fine. Otherwise, I will send a, a text to most of you. Um, there is another one as well. Oh, that's all? Amen. Excellent. I am Pastor JB, the resident pastor. Thank you. 2018 was a year of grace revolution. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I know and I understand that some of us, you are still waiting for your revolution, your grace revolution. I understand that. The God we serve is sovereign. Yes. He decides things when he wants, yes. not when I want, when you want. Right. It's completely different. So you have to understand that. Me, I want things yesterday. But God, it could be in five years or ten years. I know that. But I also know that I can declare things and things will happen. Because I raise my petition, I just declare, and all the barriers will be removed for whatever I'm declaring will happen. You could be sick and you declare that you are healed, and then it will happen. That's what we're teaching people to be able to do. Now, one thing I know, if you have received a promise in 2018 about anything, I say anything, let me tell you, it will happen. Yes. It will surely and certainly happen. It will happen when God decides it will happen. Yes. So you have to stay in faith. The ball is in your camp. God has made a declaration, and then whatever God says is yes and amen. And then God passes you the ball. Do you trust him? Can you wait until he made it possible? Hallelujah. Amen. For us, we have moved in 2019. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 2019. We declared 2019 as a year of fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to, to hear people excited. It's the year of fruitfulness. That means... Whatever God promised me in 2018 that has never happened yet will happen. And on top of that, I will have my fruitfulness in 2019. Amen. I like to start by reading the word of, of um, God that um, the preaching will be on. Uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns, your storehouses, will be filled to overflowing, and your vast will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his rebuke. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord, and do not resent this warning. All that God is saying, I must be first. Exodus chapter 34, verse 19 to 20, and then 26 says, The first offering of every womb belongs to me. Me means God, okay? Including all the firstborn males of your uh, livestock, whether from herd or flock. Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb. But if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem all your firstborn sons. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Hallelujah. So those are the two we're going to be uh, using. Um, so the, the theme for 2019 is fruitfulness. 
And it's according to Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9. That says, I will look on you with favor. Okay. God is saying, I will look on you with favor. As I said before, you have two choices. Either you take it or you say, not for me, God. I'm okay. Hallelujah. So let me start again. God is saying in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 9. I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers. And I will keep my covenant with you. Hallelujah. For Cross Friends Fellowship, in order to honor God and to show him love, we decided this year in 2019, for the month of January, we will do three things. As Apostle said, we will pray, we will fast, and we will give. Hallelujah. We will consecrate the month of January to God because we recognize that God comes first. Hallelujah. In most biblical-based churches that I know, that's what they do. The month of January is really consecrated to God. Everything I earn is consecrated to God. My prayers, fasting, and everything. That's the reason we're starting a fast today that will end on 27th. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are going to consecrate our income to God because we need an increase. We will believe that God will, will, will protect us against the devourer. Hallelujah. Uh, if, if, if you can pop for me uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, I know it's a verse that we like uh, a lot. I'm going to talk about that very quickly. Bring the whole tithe in, into the, the storehouse that there, there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floor gates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room to contain them. Hallelujah. This is God talking. Uh, following verse. Verse 11, and then after that, verse 12. I will prevent pests from dev devouring your, your crops, and the vine in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. And the following verse. Then all the nations will call you blessed. Verse 10, God is saying, I will bless you super abundantly. I can guarantee you that every Christian, even people who don't read the Bible, they love that verse. Because I am going to be blessed. Oh, hallelujah. I won't have any, even any room to contain my blessings. And, and verse 11 says, I will protect you. Okay? And verse 12, people will testify. So I see three things there. That was not my message, but I just feel talking about. This means God is promising you something. But he's saying, I have to protect you. Because the devourer may come and devour everything I have given you. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. I'm okay to give you, I'm okay to bless you super abundantly, but I need to protect you. What brings God to protect you is your faithfulness. You read the word test somewhere? Test me. God is saying, you give me, and when you give me, you're testing me. But in reality, the only person here who is tested is you. Because God is ready. He can give everything you want. And he's saying, you give me your first fruit, okay, as a test, and you will see what I can do. Because even if I bless you, and if I don't bless you, remember verse 11. The devourer can come and eat everything you had. Amen? So you still need protection, even if God overflows everything onto you. Amen. I hope we understand each other this morning. Amen. 
So Leviticus chapter 9, we just read right now. Uh, if you can um, display uh, verse 11 as well. Uh, Leviticus. God says, I will look on, on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers. And I will keep my covenant with you. And the following verse, verse 10. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. How many people experience this? When you get your check after two weeks or a month, you still have room. Your bank account is saying, oh, oh, oh that, that, that's too much. How many people? Eh? Most of us, you're waiting the next check. My goodness, you. it's Monday and you're checking. And you know that the money will get in your bank account on Wednesday. But on Monday, you're checking. You're checking if there is, if there is room. Hmm? Hallelujah. Amen. When God blesses you, you check if there is room. Amen. Because what you had last time is still there. Hallelujah. That is the secret here. We gave you verse 9 just to warn you about God's favor. But verse 10 is saying that's what will happen to you. You will be trying to make room because of the abundant blessings. Hallelujah. Am I communicating this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when you read the, the old Leviticus, you understand one thing. Without the first fruit offering to God, there was no harvest. If you don't consecrate the first fruit to God, you have zero harvest later on. We just read two verses. Malachi chapter 3, verse 11, that say, when you give and you give faithfully, I will protect what I give you. But when you don't give, you do give faithfully, you have zero protection. And God is saying, the devourer will come and take it all. Amen. Amen. So bringing the first fruit was giving back to the provider. He is the provider. He is the provider of every good and perfect gift. Hallelujah. So we believe, God, that I am giving you, and in return, you bless me. You bless me exceedingly, and you bless me abundantly. Brothers and sisters, my point this morning is this one. I give you, and in return, you bless me exceedingly and abundantly. Do not read a verse, half of the verse. Do not just read, I will be blessed exceedingly and abundantly. And you forget what you have to do to be blessed exceedingly and abundantly. Am I communicating this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to believe God for that. And God is saying first. We, we're talking about first fruit. First, first. First means God comes first. Hallelujah. Amen. If God comes first, let's say if he does not come first, then there is no blessing. Then there is no prosperity. And then there is no blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's something very important that we have to get in our spirit today. God is a God who is able to do everything exceeding, exceedingly and abundantly. That's the way it is. There is nothing that can resist God. One day, darkness thought, I am the king of the king. It was dark like we read in Genesis. It was so dark that you could take even a knife and cut darkness. It was so hard and so dark. You could see nothing until God said one word. Let light be. Hallelujah. One word. Darkness was nowhere to be seen. I pray that the, God, the darkness that it is in you be nowhere to be seen. The darkness in your finances be nowhere to be seen. As soon as God declares, let be. 
I declare light in your finances. Hallelujah. Aram went to sleep one day. He was having a fun time with God. Every day talking to God. And then he was bored. He went to sleep. When he woke up, he had a wife. Just like that. Those are the things that God can do. And God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are going to sleep. And then when they wake up, the thing they are praying for, it could be a wife, but it could be a husband too. But it could be a lot of other things. What is the difference between someone who has and someone who doesn't have? Trust. If you trust God, I'm not saying to go to bed right now, okay? <laughs> there, there is time for that. Amen. But I'm just showing the power of God. Once Mr. Aram got married, he was having fun time with his wife. He forgot God. God was not first anymore. He started listening to everything, even to the serpent. God said, you will reign. Name them. You know, one by one, they were, well, you are a serpent, you are a lion, elephant. I mean, they were respecting him. Yes, sir, go. Oh, come here. Oh, you are a cow. Yes, sir. All of them. But once he got married, I don't know what happened. Marriage is a good thing. Hallelujah. But he got distracted. And that's it. He started listening to everything, including the serpent. And the serpent was something he should not listen to. The one, one thing he should not touch, he ended up touching it. Hallelujah. For me, God was not first anymore, and he lost everything. Until today, we're suffering just because of one act, a disobedience. Brothers and sisters, Today is about obeying the word of God. Ha hallelujah. Amen. When you decide to come first or there is a, uh, something that is coming first, you're in trouble. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God and everything else will be added on to you. This means the first fruit that you're giving first will sanctify everything that comes after. Amen. How come... If I give first, if God comes first, everything else is added onto me. That means this act will sanctify everything else that will come after. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But when you give a first fruit, when God comes first, there is now an expectation of things to be added onto you. This is his, his word. He say, if I come first, if you seek me first, I will add everything else onto you after. So by me giving first, my first fruit, I have an expectation that God will add things onto me. That is what God said. Brothers and sisters, we all work. Sometimes you earn more, and then sometimes you earn less. I am sure I'm not the only one person that sometimes you, you don't understand, especially when you do your income taxes. Hey, I, I, hey, we made this much? So how, how come? What did we do? And then you start looking at your wife. <laughs> what, what okay, it's too late. It's, the end of, it's too late. The money is already gone. And the year after, you, you don't understand. Brothers and sisters, Fruitfulness means blessings abundantly. Brothers and sisters, you can buy a car, and my brother here buys a car. Hmm? After six months, your car is making noise. Eh? When you're approaching home, kids at home know all oh, that is coming. Just because I don't know what is happening to your car. And my brother, he has to hone for people to move out of his way, because the car is silent, is running smoothly. You understand? Yeah. You, the, your consumption is like the double of your, my brother. Brothers and sisters, there are things that happen that you believe you don't have a control. But when there is a grace of God on you, you don't understand. Your car runs and runs every day. 
your electricity bill is just normal. My brother is not. At an unexpected time, you receive a $300 electricity bill. So how come? Last month it was $80. What happened? And then you start going in your entire house, you turn off the light. Someone turns over, you turn off, it's okay. We need light in the house. Brothers and sisters, grace. Whoever embraces fruitfulness for 2019, things will start happening automatically. That's what we're praying for. You are not going to spend 21 days and have those kind of surprises, bills you cannot even pay, you don't understand. Huh? You always watch your speed and then you receive tickets in the mail. Hallelujah. We will pray against all of those things. They are not normal. The people who are now wise will say, yeah, you were speeding. How come last month you were not speeding and this month all of a sudden you are distracted, you are speeding? Something has happened. We have to stand against those things. First fruit means an expectation of aromatic blessings. Many fruits. God said many things will be added unto you without distinction. That means you add what you want to be added unto you. Make a list, brothers and sisters, when you pray for 21 days, have a list. So God, you said, if you seek me first, everything else will be added. I have my list. Thank you for everything you're going to give me, but here's my list. Brothers and sisters, that is what I'm going to do myself. Amen. But I, I, I cannot make a list for you. I don't know your needs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God said, I come first, nothing can be first unless there is second, there is third, there is fourth, there is something after. If you first by your own, you are alone, you're not first. So if, if there, God says, yeah, absolutely. If God said, first, I have a huge expectation because there will be second, there will be third. This if is a year where first does not belong to you, okay? First is not mine, but I'm coming with a list of expectations because second is coming, third is coming, he has had his first, so I'm coming with second, third, and so on and so on. Hallelujah. I am serious here. Amen? I repeat again. Matthew 6, says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. When I give my first fruit, I put God into test directly. I was a student. I did not like tests. I will study. I want my diploma, everything you want, but do not talk about tests. Some people lose even sleep when it comes to tests. But God does not. Hallelujah. Every time you are faithful, God is even more faithful. Hallelujah. We spoke about Malachi. It says bring all the types. It does not say 10% or only. Bring all the types. Sacrificial first fruit. First fruit increase. Tithe offering all kinds of types. And now you will see if God will not pass the test. Brothers and sisters, if you did not receive, it's not God who did not pass the test. Let's be honest this morning. It's you. (laughs) It's you. (laughs) It's you. It's not God. God will always pass the test. You did not test him. You are afraid to test him. 2019 is an opportunity to test God. Hallelujah. I'm saying 2019, try it. Test God. Put God to test. Hallelujah. The first fruit is a test that I advise you to pass. You pass the, you pass the test when you test God. God is ready. You know, when you, have a, a, when you are very smart, very intelligent, even the teacher is afraid to test you. Eh? 
So you are afraid to test God because you know he has the solution. Amen. Okay, let's talk about first fruit. The first time the first fruit is recorded in the, in the, in the Bible is at the beginning, Genesis. Genesis is very important. When you read the book of Genesis, you have to understand by then the Old Testament, what we call the Old Covenant, did not exist yet. And obviously, the new covenant did not exist as well. You understand? The, the old covenant started with Moses. But before Moses, things were happening. Okay? So when you read Genesis, you have to be careful about what you're reading. Because it was before any kind of covenant. Hallelujah. And the first fruit is recorded in Genesis. Chapter 4. Verse 2 to 5. It says, Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. That means Abel, his work, his job, was the flocks, sheep, and Cain, the soil, tomatoes, mangoes, and all kinds of things. They had two different kinds of jobs. As time passed, it happened that Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the ground. Remember, Cain was the tomato guy. So he found beautiful tomatoes, tasty tomatoes, and at some point he brought some to God. While Abel brought the best portions of the firstborn of his flock, and the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. That's it. If you sit down and you read carefully, you will understand one thing. Both Cain and Abel brought an offering to God. Abel was the one do, looking after sheep. He had a, a flock. So the expectation was he will bring some of the cows, some of the whatever he had. And Abel and Cain, his domain was different. So the expectation is he will bring some of the tomatoes, very good mangoes. I'm getting hungry now. You know, those kinds of things. That was the expectation. Okay? God did not expect Cain to bring a cow. He did not have cows. That was not his domain. Hallelujah. So they brought, they, 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 they brought uh, what they had. R here, the Bible says, there is not much that it says, but we're going to read this uh, with you. The Bible says they brought. The Bible does not say they gave. Okay? If I ask you, oh, bring me uh, a bill of $100, the, you're going to ask me, where is it? Am I right? You, you look around, it's okay. Where am I going to find it? But if I say, give me $100. If you have a bill in your pocket, you'll give me what you have in your pocket. So here the Bible is saying they brought. They brought. But now they gave. They brought. You bring what does not belong to you. You have no entitlement to something, and then you bring it to whoever is asking. Amen? Amen. But when it comes to giving, as a, a per, I give if I want. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You see the difference here? It's two, three sentences, but it's full of stuff. Um, so you understand that bring is to transport something to someone. So they brought the fruit of their labor. Everyone brought the fruit of their labor. As I said, Cain gave the fruit of the ground because that's what his, his job. And the other one brought some sheep and cows and whatever you can imagine. So both gave an offering. Abel gave the firstborn of his flock and his brother gave all the tomatoes and all the good-looking things. Both 
have done well. If you don't read the last sentence where one was accepted and one rejected, you can say both offered, both have done well, good job. But one offering did not qualify. One offering was accepted and the other one rejected. I know I have even learned when I was younger, um, Cain did not bring a blood offering, that's why it was rejected. Uh, I do not understand that because he was not expected to bring what he did not work for. That was not his job. Amen? His job was the soil, so I have to bring something from the soil because that's my job. God is expecting something from the work that I do. Do we all agree? So where is the problem? There is only one word in there that makes the difference between Cain and Abel. First fruit. Hallelujah. One brought, the other one gave. Amen. Abel brought the firstborn. That's what it says. Hallelujah. But Cain gave what he wanted. Yes, they were good looking, beautiful, fantastic, organic. Hmm? O organic, whatever you want. But he just chose what he wants to give to God. The other one did not choose. The first he brought to God. Hallelujah. That's the reason one was accepted and the other one rejected. You may think you're doing the right thing, but sometimes you're not. Why? Because of understanding. Hallelujah. So it is on that basis that Abel's offering was uh, accepted and Cain's offering was rejected. It has nothing to do with blood. I do not believe that. Hallelujah. So God is not going to ask you what he did not give you. If I gave you something, I will ask you from what I gave you, not from what I did not give you. Hallelujah. So, your entitlement is limited to, from what God have gave, gave you, some part of God, what God gave you, you are not entitled to. And God may ask you to bring it. So here at Cross Point Fellowship, like many uh, other churches, we decided that the month of January will be a month where we're going to honor God. We're going to bring our first offering in prayer, in fasting, and in giving. Hallelujah. So that the remaining of the year will be sanctified, will be blessed. If you believe for multiplication, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Am I connecting this morning? Amen. So that's what happened between these two brothers, Ken and Abel. Now, you may ask, because that's all we have, you may ask, how come Abel got this intelligence of bringing the first fruit. How come Cain could, could not? Uh, it took me hours and hours to understand that too. They were brothers living together. They all brought what they believed was good. So how come one made a mistake and the other one did not? Hallelujah. The book of Hebrew, chapter 11, verse 4 says, Abel... offered his sacrifice by faith. Hallelujah. That word faith opened my mind because if you are offering something by faith, remember what Romans chapter 10 verse 7 says. Faith comes by hearing what? Hallelujah. That means Abel was connected to God, was listening to God, was praying. Hallelujah. The 21 days of fast, it's not just a coincidence. We want to lose some weight for those who have to lose and whatever. No, it's not that. We need people to be connected to God so that they can understand what God is telling them. Amen. Brothers and sisters, some people think uh, first offering, it's oh, a certain amount of money. What if God talks to you and said, go even to your saving, go to this and bring everything? What are you going to do? That is what happened to Cain. 
Cain was not connected. Cain did not give by faith. He did not give by faith because he was not listening to God. When you listen to the word of God, it builds up your faith. And now you can hear what God is telling you. Brothers and sisters, do not miss the 21 days of fast and prayer. Fasting does not mean I'm going to die, I won't eat anything, whatever. I will send some publications so you understand what the Daniel fast is. We are asking people to, to, to starve. Hallelujah. We need church members after 21 days. <laughs> eh? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Abel offered his sacrifice by hearing and obeying the word of God. Amen. We can move forward. We still have a few minutes. Let's talk about Abraham. I think this is important. I don't just want to stop right now, right? I think this is important. Abraham in Genesis chapter 14, verse 5. I'm going to go fast this time. It says, Then the Lord took Abraham outside and said, Look at the sky and see if you can count the stars. No one is able to count the stars. The stars. Brothers and sisters, God is talking to you. Look outside. Count the stars. Those are the, 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 oh, the, the blessings I'm, I'm bringing to you. Hallelujah. That's how many descendants you will have. This was an old man. I mean old. No children. And God is saying, count the stars. Those are the kids you're going to have. Amen? Amen? Abraham believed the Lord. That's it. That's what it takes. He was old. The wife was old. But he believed. Amen? Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. Then God said, Take, take your son to the land of Moriah and kill. Okay, I just skipped a lot of things because of time's sake. It happened that at some point, after many years, I think 30 years or something, Abraham finally got his son. Unexpected time, he was old, 100 years old, but he got his son. That was a promise of God. Because when God promises something, it will come to pass. Amen? And this was the first son of the promise that God gave to Abraham. And God says to Abraham, take your son. Everyone knows that Abraham had two sons, right? Okay. But one is the son. Okay. Take your son that Abraham had with Sarah. Take your son to the land of Moriah and kill, kill him there as a sacrifice to me. My goodness. <laughs> I waited a hundred years to have one son. I know you have said that, you know, I will have many descendants. But you, you want my son? You want my son? Okay, I will bring my son. So he had to bring his only son and God is saying, take him and kill him. Give him a sacrifice to me. Just to make sure Abraham does not make any mistake and confuse and go grab Ishmael, God said, no, bring Isaac. So there is no confusion at all, bring Isaac. Amen? It will be hard and difficult when God said, bring your first fruit. God will talk to you. I'm not talking to you. God will talk to you. And it will be difficult. And I'm asking to open your ears to hear what God has to say. To talk to you. Amen. He said, oh, no, bring Isaac. Just to make sure there is no confusion here. And then go. And then I will tell you where each mountain and stuff. When they got there, because he believed, he trusted. Now he was about to kill Isaac. And that's the time where God said, Stop. I will provide the offering. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about the first fruit. You think you're going to die. God will provide. God will provide. Abraham was about to kill his only son, Isaac. Amen? God said, bring Isaac. But because he was obedient, at the time he was about to do that, God said, okay, 
I'm bringing a sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, God is talking to someone here right now. He's talking to someone right now. Hallelujah. Before God multiplies something he has given you, there will be a test. Brothers and sisters, there will be a test. I'm asking you to pass the test. Abraham, before becoming a father of multitudes, a father of nations, he had to be tested. And the test was the first fruit. Okay, I will repeat. Abraham, before becoming a father of nations, of multitudes, to the point he cannot count his children, he had to pass the test, and that test was the first fruit. And the name is Isaac. When you are willing to pass the test, God will provide. Now, let me ask you a question. Was Abraham obedient? Hallelujah. Did Isaac die? Did Abraham pass the test? Did Abraham become the father of nations? For you to have any kind of multiplication, you have to pass the test. There is nothing for nothing with God. There will be a test, but he will test you and he will provide an answer for your test. Hallelujah. Would you trust him? God is asking you to trust him. Now, when we're talking about this, we have to talk about the obedience, the reward of obedience, and unfortunately, the consequences when we don't obey. Leviticus chapter 26, I'm going to go fast. If you follow my decree and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season, and the ground will yield its crops and the tree uh, their fruit. This means it could be even a raining season and there is no rain. Amen? That's, it, it doesn't matter if it's a raining season or not. Hey, it's winter. Do you see snow outside? Yeah. Eh, it's January. It's not cold. Most people don't wear even a jacket. Am I right? Yeah. So God is in control. He can bring snow or not. Amen? So it says here, I will grant peace in the land. These are the reward when someone is obedient. I will grant peace in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. No one will make you afraid. You earn your income, but your income does not disappear. Sometimes you, you, you said, okay, I'm not going to take cash anymore. I don't understand. Maybe I have a hole in my I don't understand. God is saying your income will not disappear. I will remove wild beasts from the land, and the sword will not pass through your country. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall by the sword before you. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred will chase a thousand, and your enemy will fall before you. I will look on you with favor, and I will make you fruitful. I will increase your numbers. Amen. And I will keep my covenant with you. You will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it. I, I, I cannot wait. Amen. I, I cannot wait to eat last year. I mean, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to look at my bank account and try to make room. Because it. I cannot. Are you going to wait? I mean, me, I cannot wait. This is the kind of blessing I want too. Amen. I will walk among you and be your God, and I will be, and you will be my people. Hallelujah. I'm just skipping everything. I'm going to the consequences of not putting God first. I have to tell you, I just picked like one or two. And as a homework, when you get home, just read uh, the book of Le Leviticus, and uh, we'll talk later. <laughs> When it comes to the consequences. God is saying, when you don't put God first, uh, this is for everyone. You may choose not to put God first. Nothing will happen to you. We, we won't do anything. But this, does not, make, this not, does not stop God to be first anyways. Hallelujah. So God is not waiting for you to make him first. He is first. Amen. Even if you choose not to put him first, he is first. Maybe for you he's not first, but he's first for everyone else. 
When you don't put God first, it releases a curse upon you and upon your family. Hallelujah. When God is not first, there will be a curse. Remember the children of Israel. After spending 430 years in um, slavery, they spend another 40 years in the, the desert going around trying to find a way just because God was not first for them. They turned their back to God. Hallelujah. Anybody who could see the children of Israel in the desert going around will laugh at them. What is happening to you guys? You just crossed the, the, the Red Sea. What's wrong with you guys? When God is not first, you are going to turn around, turn around, turn around. You will never get where you're going. Hallelujah. Just to move forward. These children of Israel were not obedient. Amen? God said, okay, here is the promised land. You have ten cities to conquer. I will be with you. The first city is Jericho. I will fight for you in Jericho. I will give you Jericho. Hallelujah. God is saying in, in the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 18 to 19, he says, God said, I'm going to wipe them out. But, he says, keep away from uh, the devoted things so that you will not bring about your own destruct, uh, destruction, destruction by taking any of them. So, without reading, God sent them there and said, okay, you have ten cities. The first one is Jericho. And because it's the first, remember, first, first belongs to, to who? Hallelujah. And say, so I'm going to give you Jer Jericho, no problem. But anything in Jericho belongs to me. Any riches, any possession, everything, it's mine. You will collect everything, I will tell you where to put it. And you will destroy the city, everything down. Because I don't want you to have possession of everything. Amen. So God's instructions to the children of Israel was super clear. Amen. The first fruit belonged to God. Joshua 6.24. Then they burned the whole city and everything in it. But they put the silver and gold and all the articles of, uh, of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house as instructed. Every single person complied except one. That is where the problem is. It's just, it just takes one person to curse the, the entire thing. Everyone respected and did what God said, expect, except one person. Joshua 7. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. It's one person. But Look what he says, uh, Israel violated the instructions. A man named Achan had stolen some. He didn't even take much, but he did not respect God. That's uh, uh, Joshua uh, 7, verse uh, 1. So Achan was the son of, the, the Bible says, who he was from. But he was the guy who, who stole things. But what you have to understand here, no one knew he took things. <laughs> when you're stealing, you, you don't tell people, you know, the tithe, uh, I kept the tithe in my pocket. No, you don't say those kind of things. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So no one knew. Joshua had no clue. Everyone was happy. We did what the Lord has said. Hallelujah. And they were waiting now to go conquer the second city. But they did not know that at that time, God was not happy already. Amen. I'm going to, to finish very quickly here. So, when they were preparing to go fight for the second city, the Bible says, Joshua sent some of these men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai. When they returned... They told Joshua, there is no need for us, all of us, to go there. 
Nah, there, there is nothing. You, you see what we did for Jericho? I, I will be just, just send 3,000 people, that's it. We will take that city, no problem. But what they did not know is God had said, I will give you the city. But you, ha you did not do what God said. Even if they were confident, look what we have done in Jericho. Defeat was waiting for them in AI. Without reading everything here, they went there. I mean, they were soundly defeated by a small group of people. And some of them were even killed. Hallelujah. Amen. Their confidence, their courage, the Bible says in, in verse uh, 4, melted away. They did not know what to do anymore. We crossed the, rev, red, the Red Sea. You gave everything in possession to us. Well, the first one was fantastic. Now the second one, what is happening? So they started praying. Fast and pray to understand what is happening. And God revealed what happened now. So one of you guys uh, took my stuff. The first is mine. I told you, take everything else, but not the first. Hallelujah. And because God singled out that person, that person got put to death. Not only that person, but his entire family. Even family members who had no clue. Whew. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm just skipping everything. Be very careful with the first fruit. The consequences are not only on you, but you and the entire family. Hallelujah. The entire congregation, the entire nation. That's the consequences of not respecting the word of God. Because of one man, everyone suffered. Hallelujah. Do not take what belongs to God. Okay, I will repeat again. Do not take what belongs to God. You are bringing curse on you and curse on your family. Hallelujah. You understand it. Either you obey or you disobey. Hallelujah. Thank you. In 2019, brothers and sisters, do not bring curse to your income. 2019 is not just the month of January. I know some are praying, oh, I hope this is just already February. Okay, I'm here to tell you there is March as well, and then April, and May, and so on to December. So don't bring curse to those months. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is saying when you don't give what belongs to him in the book of Malachi chapter 3, you are rubbing from him, and you know the consequence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I know time is flying, so I'm going to end everything here. When you respect God, he places a blessing on you and on your entire family. When you do not respect him, he brings curse on you and your entire family. Ezekiel chapter 44, uh, 30 says, the best of all the, the first fruits and all your special gift will belong to the priest. Hallelujah. You are to give them the first portion of your grand meal so that a blessing may rest on your household. Not on you only, but on your uh, household. Amen. Amen. There is a Chinese say that says, to know and not do is to not know. Amen. Okay. That means... To believe God and not obey God, it's equivalent to not believe him at all. The book of James, chapter 2, verse 26 says, faith apart from works is dead. We always say actions speak louder than talking. Amen? So do not talk, but act. Amen? When you know and you don't act, you are equivalent to someone who does not know. And the, the, the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. If you know and do not do, you are equivalent to someone who lack knowledge. And the consequence of lacking knowledge is to perish. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to end this right now.
if you could stand up. I hope you, you're going to smile and, and be joyful. Hallelujah. We're talking about 2019. Yeah? You, will be fr- you will produce fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's close our eyes and lift our hands. This is, an, this is a blessing to leave 2019. This is the first service in 2019. And I have joy in my heart to be the one talking to you. And I hope everyone has listened to me. So if you agree with me, just close your eyes. As I'm going to decree I decree that this year, 2019, God will hear our cries for mercy. God will hear our cries for justice. I declare that things will turn around in 2019. Hallelujah. I declare the opening of heavenly gates and ancient doors that will bring us into a deeper relationship with our God. Hallelujah. I decree that God will renew your youth. God will renew your strength in 2019. Hallelujah. In 2019, I declare that disappointment, I declare that hopelessness has ended. 2018 ended with hopelessness and disappointment. We will see new things. We will explore new things. 2019 will bring fruit and fruit abundantly. Hallelujah. Whatever was not working in 2018 will work in 2019. I declare breakthrough in 2019. I declare financial breakthrough in 2019. Oh, hallelujah. I declare that this year is a year of fruitfulness. God will bless you. God will bless your family abundantly and exceedingly in the name of Jesus. If you agree with me, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord. I receive it, Lord. I receive it. I say thank you in advance, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We dedicate the month of January to you, Lord, because we will see miracles. Oh, it's difficult, but it's not, it's not impossible. Hallelujah. You are a God of possibilities. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, come on. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky.
special prayer, you can come in the front. Uh, we will lay hands on you. Uh, others, you are free to go home. But please, like we traditionally do, just give a high five to someone, hug someone. Amen. Before you go home. Amen. Let's lift all the high.